very good morning good morning and uh, before we start let me extend our uh, heartfelt thanks on the part of the all panelists to dr hires luhar director of this institute and the management and all other faculties for having invited us for this uh, discussion and i'm sure all of you will make the best out of it and feel free to ask any query anything you have in mind after this session is over we will give you opportunity to talk to us even out of this also anybody has any uh, query on uh, how the your uh, career in finance or anything that also we can even is out of this uh, discussion for view of this discussion and the all of you are aware of the discussion paper the financial futures exploring trends and the opportunities and uh, being the moderator of the panel on this uh, this discussion on financial futures it is essential for me to provide a complete overview of the topic highlighting the key trends and opportunities shaping the financial future this discussion paper aims to set the stage for insightful dialogue among the panelists all the panelists and all of you i will not take much of your time will because we will proceed with the discussion but before i uh, think it is uh, prudent on my part to talk about the introduction uh, introduction the financial landscape is undergoing rapid transformation and driven by lot of technological advances regulatory changes and shift in consumer behaviors understanding the emerging trends and identifying the opportunities are crucial for navigating the complexities of financial market and positioning ourselves for the success before us the biggest example is our own country with the strong dynamic under the dynamic leadership of our prime minister our country has identified the opportunities and taken advantage of the situation and taken lot of in initiatives including the atmanirbhar bharat and we are well set to become the world's third largest economy by 2030 this is a very glaring example our regards on brief to certain trends the key trends of this are digitization and fintech innovation you have seen lot of uh, fintech startups are they are they are mushroomed in india and doing very well and the technological innovations like blockchain artificial intelligence and big data analysis are giving a big boost to the all financial financial uh, efforts these innovations are reshaping the existing financial transactions creating efficiency it is become making it more efficient and uh, it has enhanced the accessibility to the common people second is evolving regulatory environment the regulatory environment framework also is undergoing a change which is clearly based on the change in consumer behavior change in innovations change in technology and some new uh, risks have uh, come up so that is how the regulation has been fine tuned to that extent so understanding regulatory trends and compliance requirements is essential for the financial institutions and fintechs as well there there is a shift towards sustainable finance there is a something called esg environmental social and governance considerations are gaining prominence in investment and all financial decisions nowadays including the production decisions are also based on esg concepts sustainable finance offers opportunities for the financial institutions to align with social values 
then rise of digital assets all of you have might have heard of the cryptocurrencies and uh, central banks our uh, rbi is central bank digital currency and decentralized finance platforms are the glaring examples then democratization of finance the new technology has been fine to to certain extent that the intermediary are already done away with there is no need of any intermediary people have direct access to the finance and other banking uh, banking helps your yeah, banking uh, uh, channels then as regards opportunities we'll talk about innovation and product development with technology and technical advancement uh, the products are also undergoing change modification updation from time to time and it is the they have they have the opportunity to leverage technology to develop innovative products and services then enhanced customer experience this has helped improving the this has helped the customers to have a better experience on the slew of products which are being offered to them embracing the digital channels and adopting a customer centric approach are critical for staying the relevant in rapidly evolving landscape then risk management and compliance solutions already have spelled out with change in time change in consumer behavior some new risks have erupted some new risks have been identified so appropriate risk management technique and compliance solutions have come to mitigate such risks then impact on investing and in esg integration esg already i have uh, told you so integrating esg considerations into investment strategies present opportunities for financial institutions to tap into growing demand for sustainable finance developing esg focused products engaging in impact investing and providing esg advisory services can attract social responsible investors and drive positive changes in the market then another taking advantage of exploring the digital currency like cryptocurrency and blockchain opportunities blockchain opportunities have given rise to lot of other opportunities and it has helped in increasing efficiencies so in a nutshell i will conclude here that the future of finance is dynamic and uh, multifaceted characterized by technological disruption regulatory evolution and changing consumer preferences by embracing innovation understanding market trends and identifying strategic opportunities financial institution can navigate the complexities of the financial landscape and drive sustainable growth in the years to come as the moderator of this panel discussion it will be essential on our part we will be trying to have a very constructive dialogue with all of you there will be a it will be much it will be more interactive by fostering collaboration and knowledge sharing we can collectively navigate the challenges and seize the opportunities that lie ahead for us thank you so much with this we'll uh, proceed with the panel discussion I think uh, we don't need to speak now. He has almost covered everything. <laughs> But uh, you, you can start actually. Yeah.
Oh, it's working now. Okay. So, uh, good morning to all the panelists, Mr. Das, and my friends, and uh, my friends sitting here. First of all, I would like to see a nice smile on your face. It's very as uh, Sir has mentioned, there is going to be an interactive se session. Uh, but before we go into question and answer session, we thought we'll just give you a perspective. So when we discuss, we will be giving you a perspective what is happening at a macro level, at a global level, and at a micro, micro level in India, what is happening. We may give you some numbers. We also talk about uh, uh, the practical opportunities or challenges what we have and we also talk about our experiences and that's how we have just discussed uh, before we start this okay all of us know that india is going to be a 5 trillion economy by end of next year okay and the government also has aspiration uh, of or all of us should have this aspiration to reach 10 trillion by 2030. And with this 10 trillion, we can become the third largest economy in the world. Okay. So once probably we would have dreamt or predicted that prediction is now getting into reality. Now what we would like to discuss over here that how we will achieve this 2030 at a macro level global level, if you see, there are challenges in terms of the geopolitical tension which are going on in the world and the global economy, the, the developed country economy is also slowing down. Vis-a-vis -vis Indian government, the Indian economy, wherein when we talk about 10 trillion economy, by 2030, 69% of our population would be a working population. So if 69% of the population would be a working population, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of support which will be required so that we can reach? And what are the key focus areas which probably government or the policy makers and business leaders are looking at? Those are the areas probably, uh, we, uh, uh, those are the areas we are going to discuss over here. Uh, first and foremost, what I think, sir, is that to reach at that kind of economy, what we need is a large part of uh, a population getting into entrepreneur kind of uh, working environment. When they start their own business, the startups and new opportunities. Now for that, uh, what is required is first thing is the housing for that population. Second thing is the infrastructure. Third thing is all the policies which are directed towards those entrepreneur things, which can give them. These are the important. And fourth important thing, I being banker, is that accessibility to the finance. These are the four things which I think, which right now if you start working on, then as far as infrastructure, whether it's a housing or infrastructure, what you see the development, government has already started that initiative 10 years back, which are seeing the results now. Uh, with respect to finance and other things, now these are the areas which we will look at. I, 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 I request my friends here to discuss about these aspects also. Sir? Thank you. Uh, all of you are well aware of the uh, our uh, um, commitment, the commitment of the government, the commitment of the people uh, in order to achieve the position of third largest economy in the world by 2030, that is by crossing 10 trillion by 2030. <coughs> so the positivity is, the better, as uh, Sanjeevan clearly spelled out, 69% of the working population can be a booster, can be a catalyst provided the necessary infrastructure and support is given. And with the accessibility, uh, as I have, we have told, the democratization of finance, the accessibility to finance has improved substantia, substantially what over, than what used to be 10 or 12 years before. 
So with the available opportunities, India is confident of achieving this, um, what you call, uh, there is the aspiration of becoming the third largest economy in the world. Yeah. Okay. Jai Hind, students. Yes, sir. Good. This is what I learned from my daughter. So. <laughs> I'm continuing with that. So good. Thank you for inviting us and uh, listening to us. We are all old bankers. So don't go by the what was the introduction given by. We are just a simple people and old bankers. So whatever we can say, we will try to share uh, today with you. To be honest, as far as I'm concerned, let me be very honest that I'm still a student. So don't think I'm somebody, you know, which is a very old experience and all those things. I'm still learning. I'm still a student. So I'm on your side. So in simple sense, don't ask me any difficult questions. <laughs> all difficult questions to me. This is... <laughs> okay. And when I say I'm an old banker, uh, you know, let me, let me tell you... You can ask questions to the youngest guys. <laughs> <laughs> You can see his degrees actually. I was actually trying to read that. <laughs> so let's make it very interactive. Please stop us. Please ask the questions. Any questions. Only exception is about your boyfriend, girlfriend and movies. <laughs> okay. Rest anything else. You can ask the question. We will try to answer to the best of our ability. And if you don't know the answer, this is the promise I know, always make. I will go home, do my homework and send you the answers. That's the commitment. Okay. So when we talk about when I keep saying we are old banker. So I am actually a banker from the say, from the day when there used to be the a different kind of an banking. Being a banker, I will talk more about the banking. So you know, at that point of time, the branch manager was a king. Okay, there used to be check, there used to be clearing system. Uh, you may not be knowing about you know high value clearing and normal clearing. We used to actually issue the check. The check used to be you know get cleared in three days, four days, sometimes outstation checks, you know, those kind of things. So now what we have seen is completely reversed. So when we talk about the trends in the industry, especially in banking and of finance, it is completely reversed. You know, I still remember when I approached one bank, it was a cooperative bank and I approached the bank for the uh, educational loan. And when I went there, I wanted to actually, you know, meet the branch manager, understand what I'm doing. To be honest, I was actually doing the Oracle ERP software. Uh, it was a high cost uh, kind of a course at that time. I'm talking about almost uh, 25, 30 years, somewhere in 95, 96. So when I approached him, I was made to wait for almost 30 to 45 minutes outside the branch manager's cabin. And he was acting really like a, he's something like Big Shot, he's Amitabh Bachchan. <laughs> so he, then after 45 minutes, he called me, asked me, he checked everything, gave me the big list of the papers and all those things. And when I actually looked at it, he called another officer. He explained all the process of loans and all those things. I looked at him and said, thank you very much. But I got the flavor of it and I don't think I need a loan from you. Let me borrow it from my parents. And I actually borrowed it from my parents and my brother. So that from that stage, 30 years back, today, the situation is completely reversed completely reverse. Now, today, I keep getting the calls from all the branch managers. Forget marketing officers or assistant manager. All branch managers keep calling me. Sir, you loan a I'm sure any, anybody, any having, anybody having mobile will always get a call. Loan chahiye kya? Now, that is where we are coming. When we actually used to do the check clearance, you know, we used to have the, in a, in a banking, we used to have a control. We used to know as a client, if he has issued the check to the real estate developer, for purchasing the flat or he has actually you know purchased a shares or anything so we used to have the control if as a branch manager i have given a loan to any corporate it used to be cleared only through checks nothing online was there so there was a control i never used to approve any check which was issued to any share broker so that i could control the leakages of the fund diverges or divergence of the funds when a bank gives the loan bank can give the loan for the short term credit or long term credit and if we need to catch whether the funds are getting diverted from the short term to long term which is 60 to 70 percent the main reason of the defaults by the corporates i can get 
counter checked by just holding back the check now that situation is not there you get a salary on day one say on the first of january end of the day all debits emis car loans housing loans this loan personal loan wife's ornament loan so many loans and it will get end of the day you will get morning opening balance say 10000 rupees salary credit 160000 rupees end of the day 5000 rupees those kind of thing so that is what no question is how do you control that but the technology has actually taken up some controls it has given a multiple controls you can actually control what kind of an amount can go through a particular account how you can actually control it so when we are actually nowadays looking at the old ways of giving loans when we talk about we keep talking about the msme uh, banking and giving at most you know loans immediately there are few companies talking about the loan approval in one hour it's not possible i'm being honest with you it will be only given a in principle sanction that uh, in principally approved but final approval will remain on you know submission of certain documents and certain criteria so we will do but then basic change in the shift we call it paradigm shift it's from collateral back lending to cash flow back lending what i mean to say that whenever a bank used to lend earlier they used to ask for lots of collateral security they will take your plant and machinery as a collateral they will take some kind of house as a collateral they will talk your future receivable you know if you really look at old banking arrangements <laughs> sir will actually agree we used to actually call for all future asset on the ground above the ground below the ground this is where actually the wording of the old agreements now this is changing now from collateral back lending now we are moving to the area of cash flow back lending so people <coughs> have started looking at whether i am funding particular working capital finance of a bank how is cash flow is coming how his buyer is making the payment whether the buyer is good and then take a decision rather than looking at his past performance of last three years so what we call it is a balance sheet lending this is a critical change in the banking and if you really look at it trend from those perspective there used to be a lot of stuff you know for me i mean sometimes we do that i mean uh, even today for me to do the kyc in state bank of india takes something like anything between uh, you know seven days to something like three months so that happens even today but these are all exceptional cases but then if you look at the digitization what has brought in it's complete smooth processing you can do the kyc in just 5 minutes it is called as a uh, video kyc or digital kyc it is approved by reserve bank of india you just call the people you just check it out take the video kyc is done how do you cross check the genuineness of document pan card it will get cross check with the nstl aadhar card it will get cross check through the order through uh, udai uh, website and this is all technologically enabled by many service provider so when you talk about the kyc when you talk about the gst earlier the biggest problem for me as a banker is that for export i can say whether the invoice is genuine or not because there are too many controls but for domestic it's like a ghar ki kheti you print the invoice you print the you know photocopy the uh, lolly receipt and do it now it can be still checked because what i am doing when i am cross checking or financing any invoice in domestic i am going to cross check it with the gst portal now what is gst is compulsory you raise the invoice of 100 you add the gst that gst get reported so we are looking at those kind of an control so if technology has taken off some control physical control it has given us some more controls which are which are absolutely fine i am actually working on a project where i am actually looking see client should not put anything in the system don't give me anything i will pull the entire data from the gst show all the invoice raised by the client and i will ask client only just come to my portal just select one two three i need finance against these three invoices that's it we are talking about that technology and as after that once you select what will happen there will not be any manual intervention the system will process the invoice if preset criteria are being met with that kind of an invoice like what should be the tenor what should be the amount and all those thing the financing will be released automatically to the client's current account we are talking about those kind of an those kind of an automation so lot of things to talk about but uh, i will stop here there are multiple things we keep keep asking the question and we'll keep giving the lot of case studies so i will just pass on to him and uh, maybe you can actually share your thoughts for uh, i i will add here uh, 
we joined the banking industry when there was no computers. Yes. Uh, okay. I joined uh, a leading PSU bank in 1986 as a probationary officer. Most of you were not born that time. <laughs> so that time manual ledgers used to be there. And one ledger which I was not able to carry, current account ledger, very heavy. It will be 20 kilo. Wet. It will be like this no. and it will be open with a key. <laughs> you have to move that key and then open the ledger. It's so huge. <laughs> so and uh, at the end of the day, you have, you have to tally the entire banking transactions, make the cash book, general ledger, then you will be allowed to go home. Then I, I have seen the computerization in 80s. First computerization I have successfully completed in uh, 92. That was called automated tailor machine. Um, uh, it tailors. Or oh, tailor uh, at counters were uh, computerized. Not only the, uh, land. It was not on uh, Gradually the wide area network came. Local area network was there. So one branch used to work on lo local area network. Gradually the wide area network came concept. Now the all the banks were are operating on CBS platform. Cloud. That is fina either finical, yeah, completely you can bank, uh, to make your transaction anywhere in the world. That's possible now. As regards availability of credit, he has said that he used to go to a branch, sit there for 45 to 50 minutes, then uh, the fate of the loan is unknown, still unknown. <laughs> and negative attitude, uh, no, 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 loan queue there, right? <laughs> Nowadays, there are digital platforms, you just fill in your details, your loan will be processed. Mm -hmm. They are they are using your, uh, you can say, AI, SLK, all the techniques, or te with the technological advancement, your loan is getting approved within 49 minutes. So that is how um, the acceptable accessibility towards banking has improved like anything. Then with the advent of blockchain technology, the trade finance uh, activities have become more smoother, more easier. Thank you. Next. Yes, sir. Just taking forward from there, sir is saying that 49 minutes my loan is getting sanctioned. I would say it is now pre-approved loans. Before you won't, we, we can give you the loan. So that is the status now. Okay, just uh, my views that uh, uh, with regards to digitization only. Uh, so from an economy uh, where we are targeting a 10 trillion and maybe now recently Modi, uh, PM Modi has said that I would target by 2047 to be the first largest uh, uh, economy. Uh, so if we are targeting to be the first top on, uh, of the uh, world, what, what are what next from here? Now just to with regards to digitization. Why am I able to do that digitization? What uh, servers not going was not capable of doing or what was not supported by the system maybe 15 years back is I think uh, there are three things that uh, what the government has done is jam what they say jam one is jandan Aadhaar uh, jandan uh, account opening accounts are there for all everyone has a bank account second was Aadhaar. Aadhaar has actually helped us do all the KYC. So Digital Aadhaar signatures. and the fourth is, uh, third is mobile. You have internet and mobile with everyone and this has enabled us to do UPI transactions. Mm. Earlier as sir said, it would take three, four days to just clear one check. Uh, now now 15 seconds, you just scan and send money, right? That is UPI. So this is digitization for us uh, and we are much ahead of other uh, economies uh, with regards to uh, infrastructure in uh, digitization or in uh, service sector. We have missed uh, the bus of manufacturing maybe a few years back, uh, a few decades back actually. Uh, but now we are ahead in uh, infrastructure for uh, digitization. And we are catching up with uh, infrastructure spending by government uh, in last 10 years. Company uh, Government has also now, you know, uh, putting his, putting full force by giving PLIs and, you know, uh, having the manufacturing 
uh, what we say GDP to be supported by manufacturing and services both so they uh, if you have recently uh, PM Modi has uh, inaugurated uh, this maybe uh, 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 semiconductor in Dholera mm -hmm. it is uh, 91,000 crores of project uh, there in Assam they are setting up 30,000 crores of project for semiconductor semiconductor is the chips that is there in the mobile right that the ultimate uh, why we are not there in in mobile uh, we are there but ultimately the actual chips are not manufactured in India so we are behind on that so government is giving 70 percent subsidy so for 90,000 crores 70 percent is financed by government so that is what the government is doing to make uh, India on the manufacturing side and on uh, uh, digitization also. With regards to digitization, I think the major success uh, after JAM was giving direct benefit to the uh, actual beneficiaries that has helped uh, the uh, you know uh, rural areas where the actual uh, earlier the benefit so rupees jata tha, the Rajiv Gandhi speech is there. If I give 100 rupees, the actual beneficiary gets 3 rupees. <laughs> so that, that is how uh, it was happening. Now with digitization, with UPI, uh, banking has changed drastically. So the finance is available to you before you want. We have pre-approved limits. Hmm. How, how is that happening? Preview. Banking, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of data with us right and we as as a bank are able to use that data to give you that finance we have the background what have you spent where have you spent what is your income or you uh, we can access gst we can access your kyc with that data we are able to give you that finance and this digitization will further improve our uh, you know customer service for you right uh, so now you are not going to branch at all. I, I think I have not visited the branch for last five years, I think. So everything is on mobile app. Uh, that is digitization for uh, uh, us now, as compared to what the banking was earlier. Similarly, uh, with regards to lending, I am in lending. Uh, I would say uh, earlier, we used to get a proposal for a, a sanction and we would disburse after six months. Yes. Okay, and now I'm getting a call. I want a 600 crores, sir. Uh, I, I want it in April. I said, sir, you March me March. I'll give you 600 crores in 15 days time. So that is the speed of digitization uh, that we are talking about. So this is uh, digitization. So also now, I don't know, uh, it is a far fetch, but there will be digital banking also. Digital branch on Metaverse. Metaverse is uh, some time ahead, blockchain, uh, blockchain yeah. and Metaverse, maybe blockchain yeah. can uh, give that. But the banking is uh, going to be one of the key uh, element uh, uh, finance for the growth of the uh, country as such. Right? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. One thing, uh, all of you are uh, confident that we will be able to cross 10 million economy, 10 trillion economy by 2030. Is not it? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. We can. So the best, uh, what is the comfort factor? 65% of our Indian population are below 35 years of age. You guys will do it. It's not uh, me or uh, I think <laughs> most of us are uh, here. Okay. <laughs> So that is where the major advantage and this make in India concept has not only given uh, a rise to a lot of uh, new setups, startups and uh, um, created a large number of entrepreneurs in the country. It has also created a lot of large number of jobs for the people. So that also is an another catalyst in uh, Indian economy. So not only third, I think uh, we will also be able to reach to the first level, number one position down the line during the time to come. 
you have seen our chandrayaan yes. hmm. make in india yes. and what happened to recently one country has sent a rocket uh, blast kar gaya <laughs> what is that japan. japan country like japan could not do and india could do look look at the resilience look at the uh, you know the level of uh, confidence amongst our people the due diligence the urge to do thank you thank you sir so hello friends uh, duhar sir and uh, our colleague panelist uh, i have been put on a spot <laughs> so please, i am as ordinary as you all are and uh, don't be deceived by this uh, qualifications and degrees do you can ask questions uh, if i could answer right now i will uh, give you the answers if uh, else i will i will always, always come back so feel free to ask anything particularly uh, i'll be i'll be talking on the opportunities uh, what will be having in future which is like led by the technology so today is uh, in this era which we are sitting in is particularly we are the generation which are like witnessing a rapid uh, transformation in the financial sector and that is fueled by the technology so nowadays technology is a key thing in any sector which you talk about particularly here we are we are talking uh, in terms of the financial sector so when there are innovations so innovations followed by the expectations if there there are innovation happening everybody's expectation is like going up up and up if expectation is going up then to meet the expectation there must be development of the product and the services riding on the technology and if the product and services particularly in the financial sector are be, are being made which are riding on the technology for regulator it is going to be very difficult to control that we have seen the, the case in uh, cryptocurrencies in india still rbi is not comfortable with the dealing in the cryptocurrency do officially they don't say no but they don't allow banks to like do the transactions allow transactions in a uh, cryptocurrencies the same time this dynamic landscape is provide opportunities so first opportunities is like uh, consistently developing uh, product and services uh, we we have witnessed a uh, development of uh, wallets payment wallets uh which provide us ease ease of uh, making the payments if uh, if you go in the market uh, buying a tea 10 rupees that cutting you will be able to pay using your uh, mobile wallet that everybody has like witness this is not something which is uh thinking we are witnessing here in india and let me tell you when in terms of innovation particularly in the financial sector india is leading the world in many front we are well ahead of the development countries <coughs> with the invent of uh, upi like we were able to capture right starting from the very root rural rural uh, population till uh, this uh, metro people not only within india but uh, upi is being supported by other countries also for example nepal bhutan sri lanka uh, singapore and uh, france so th all these countries are right now supporting the upi payment going forward there are plan uh, to launch it in uh, uk and it will be followed uh, for all other country because the transaction doing the transaction is so easy and it receivable so that's the reason that's one thing and then next thing is robo advisors today if you open any website uh, any banking website or any website uh, what to do how to do we don't need to know the like content just put your question they will guide you go on on this tab click this tab and you will able to do that so robo advisors and that thing which is going to make uh, your life easy in the uh, uh, financial sector in in the future then we have a peer lendings peer lendings uh, in in uh, this part uh, at a present this is developing peer lending is developing so what is happening that uh, banks collect deposits and uh, then they offer loan 
I have money, I have deposited, somebody in need of money, then go and take loans. Bank is paying to the depositor suppose 6%, they are charging the borrower at 14%. So they, they are earning a huge. So this difference is not going to the ultimate, the person who actually owns the money. So now this is the era wherein we are having the platforms like, uh, so just to quote example, lending clubs. So if you go to lending club, you onboard yourself. Now you can like land, you can earn, earn interest. The lending club will be onboarding the person who is having money. The lending club will be onboarding the people who need the money. Borrower and lender both will be on the uh, lending club platform and they will be exchanging uh, their monies and they will be getting the interest. So these are the development in the products and then uh, enhancement in uh, customer expectation again. As I said that if you are, we are uh, riding on the technology and uh, making innovation, the expectation always goes goes up and up. So example, just for example of the, the ex, uh, exceeding the customer expectations. For example, if you want to plan something, if you want to buy a home after 10 years, after 20 years. So how much money is required? Where you need to invest? Your financing planning part is well taken care by the technology. But at the same time, uh, it's, it's, uh, there are risks as well because once you onboard yourself of any of the fintech platform, uh, just to quote an example, CRED or any platform, just, just for understanding purpose, I am quoting CRED. They ask you to allow you to read all your emails and all your SMSs. So there is a nothing private for you, right? So you, you have been onboarded by CRED, they are reading all your messages, personal or anything, all your emails. They get to know that your salary is created today, tomorrow you will get a call. Credit card le lije, loan, uh, personal loan le lije, you can, they will be offering you a finance solution, investment solution also for that. So that is the era we are living through. We need to be very sure that on what platform you are getting yourself on boarded, what permission you are allowing. Because everybody is like watching your information, reading your information, they are storing your information without the uh, like ex without the uh, telling you. They will they will ask you to tick the boxes, get the permission. But nobody had time to read what are the terms and conditions which you are clicking in. And they will be getting all, all the informations. So customized solutions. Then comes the risk, risk management. Risk management plays a very vital role. When you are venturing into something new. And here we are like riding on the technology. The risk, risk is like multiplies. So we need to do the risk assessment and the financial landscape grows in the complexity. There is a pressing need for the advanced risk management systems. So there comes play of the RegTech solutions, FinTech on the financial side, from regulatory side, whether you are following all the rules, regulations, laws of the land or not. So there comes the role of the RegTech. Again, what RegTech does that uh, on uh, 31st of uh, January, in January itself, Reserve Bank of India, as you see a guideline that all the banks, uh, all the regulated entity, in fact, needs to have uh, uh, system-driven uh, solutions to track and monitor their internal compliances. So they will be reading all the guidelines applicable to a particular bank and uh, whether the organization is complying with the lot or a dashboard, a dashboard of the same must be provided to the senior management so that they will have a view that if there is a proper penalty uh, on, the, on the organization. So the, uh, the, the role of the RegTech again is important. Then a use of AI in uh, fraud detection, use of AI in our like uh, customer onboarding KYC. If suppose a bank is going to lend to some person, the bank is, bank is supposed to know about the, about the client. Who is the client? They're doing their customer identification, their customer due diligence, their enhanced due diligence. And then after only the bank is going to either lend or provide any any banking services. 
then the use of a blockchain i use it with the use of a blockchain there are again many products there are many opportunities like a smart contract supply chain financing and even cross border payments we talked about upi is limited to certain country but using this uh, uh, cross border payment systems wherein uh, blockchain help you get to know about the person if you are making payment somebody suppose in hong kong you get to know about the person to who making payment who is the person all around if you are buying some product so this blockchain is going to help on that so to conclude that uh, this change in the financial land landscape transformation of financial landscape riding on the technology brings a lot of opportunity for everybody at the same time you need we need to be mindful of the risk and do the proper risk management thank you hello so what we are trying to say here is how is going to affect your life ye to humne sab suna but ye hamare jeevan ko kaise asar karega so we spoke about what mr das told that the kind of hardship what we had that is eased by digitalization okay mr pradhan also talk about that how digitalization help to do trade more efficiently mr kevin talk about that how digitalization is help to get a easy access to the finance now how is going to affect your life is that the more consumption comes into the picture more the economy thrive right लोगों के पास जितना पैसा आएगा उतना वो जाके फ्रिज टीवी खरीदेंगे उतने मैन्युफैक्चर टू पुट मोर प्लांट्स मोर द प्लांट्स मोर द जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज राइट इट्स एज सिंपल इज दैट हेंस द डिजिटलाइजेशन एक्चुअली ब्रिंग्स द नॉन बैंकेबल टू द बैंकेबल सो द मूवमेंट द नॉन बैंकेबल बिकम्स बैंकेबल that means okay let me give an example non bank for example you have a a, a pani puri wala he is making a 10000 rupees a month hai na swipe up wo jo karte ho usko 10000 rupees milta hai now the money goes in his account so after one year whatever cash he has savings he goes to the bank and tells him sir can you lend me 50000 rupees bank says yes we can give you 50000 rupees so he can probably help that money he can send it to his native there some his brother can start another shop over here non bankable became more bankable he makes money he start purchasing bikes and uh, you know fridge and all mobile phones etc right this is how the digitalization will help to grow because we still have 6 lakh villages to be catered for this and the large part of this 10 trillion economy what we are talking about is development of that rural area that is where the consumption is there and that consumption which actually help the entire industry fertility to thrive and that is where the job creation will happen hence just to you know ye dots ko mai agar ek kare sath mein milane ke liye to all this digitalization and all this thing will help actually to india thrive you know digitalization is something that the entire world is envying about india and they are feeling envious that the kind of uh, progress what we are making but the same point in time sir has raised a very valid point is with all this artificial intelligence etc coming into the picture there is a human element which comes into the picture that has to be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, balanced out by the right kind of government policies so when it comes to uh, 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 when the computerization has happened way back 20 years back when uh, we were new in the management college and when first time we have seen what email was into uh, 2020 at uh, oh, sorry 2000 uh, year Uh, that time and today if we see the risk of data theft etc has increased okay data has become the most critical part of it that your consumption so this has both effect one is if you want if you search for tv you get a nice 10 options of tvs then you can make your decision better okay but at the same time there is a data risk so government has to intervene that point in time the government entered late but now 
government policies are working parallelly we are we should be thanking that they also understand digitalization so parallelly there will be a policy but that balance out has to happen but having said uh, this thing the most critical critical aspect still remains is that uh, is about sir i would like to uh, 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 probably student would like to know that what exactly a government policies which are the areas government actually can work still infrastructure yes there is a development but still there are lot can be done when it comes to policy matters because still if a businessman so being an msme kevin you will agree with me that i go and talk to a, 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 a msme uh, owner who is a 100 crore uh, turnover person i'll tell him sir we have a fantastic expand, uh, infrastructure why don't you take 20 crore loan and set up a plant so he will say no boss in worst of the situation i should be able to pay what loan i have because of all the npas and ibc policies and it has become so stringent that businessmen are not that proactive taking loans they have really been pushed number one number two while the large corporates are getting into expansion mode okay still their supply chains are very weak so i was talking to somebody who is very large infra company who is into uh, into power they said still if i want a transformer i have to wait for 6 months of time hence the supply chain has to be strengthened when i say supply chain that comes largely from the msme sector that particular sector where the job creation is there that is where the area which used to come and the lastly sir when i say msme the 90% of the msme we were just discussing with mr lwar that 90% of the msme are nano msme matlab jin logo ka turnover 5 crore se 10 5 lakh se 10 lakh ka hai 90% of this msmes are there any in, 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 beside the in, uh, digitalization we talk about are there any is enough infrastructure for them to create that kind of businesses these are the questions i think uh, i think uh, which need to be addressed and if we, uh, if you have I something think I can to share please please i can, I can certainly share some yes mr prabhu just Thank before you. that anybody has any questions i'll tell you one secret whenever you go for the interview ask at least one question to the interviewer always coming back to the discussion if you have no <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when we talk about uh, you know 10 trillion economy being the super power becoming the third largest uh, economy by 2030 super power by 2047 and all those thing it looks good good to hear good to see good to dream but the question is whether we have a infrastructure that's the absolutely valid question and actually government has been working on it for last almost 10 15 years we are not talking about any specific political party i am here only to talk about the how the infrastructure is getting created you know the who is the uh, you know biggest sufferer in the uh, you know trade chain large corporate there were there are banks which are standing in the queue in their gates to lend them the money i have been the banker he has been the banker i can tell you for one of the largest oil and gas company whenever you used to go we used to actually go with a request to please take the money from us and like me there will be other 10 bankers in the queue they will also request the company please take the loan from me please take the basket from me please take the export finance from me he is aware of it so lohar is aware of it so question is who is the la- you know biggest sufferer in the trade chain is the msme or the vendors which are actually supplying to the large corporate so what government did they decided to set up one technology platform called trace platform trade receivable e discounting system so it is a basically a marketplace now what happens on that marketplace is basically a normal marketplace where uh, seller will be onboarded corporate buyers will be onboarded and the financiers will be onboarded when i say seller it is completely restricted only to the msme sellers nobody else can be onboarded if if i am a large corporate i cannot be acting on the platform as a seller it will be only msme micro small and medium business enterprises can be logged in or can be onboarded as a seller now whenever they are selling they are raising the invoice this invoice will be uploaded on the system it is completely technology platform 
all the invoice details will be uploaded on the platform that invoice will be accepted by the buyer now suppose for example xyz a proprietary concern is supplying to hua some small vendor some raw material is supplying now the what is the thought process of all these big mncs are large corporate to delay the payment as much as possible but there is a rule that if there is an msme supplier he need to be paid within 45 days that is a rule but then there are ways to avoid that you will say there is some quality issue query some query will be raised some email will be raised to avoid those it has been agreed now that all these msme suppliers will upload the invoices on the system and that will be accepted by the buyer straight away no question unless until it is rejected because of some genuine reason yes it can be rejected but they will accept it and once it is invoice is accepted like a vendor supplying to hul that means who is now supposed to make the payment on the due date hul so if i am a banker for me who is the risk now hul risk not the msme so when i am purchasing a receivable or purchasing a invoice or financing the invoice when i am financing i am supposed to get, get it back with the interest right now in a normal scenario if i finance the msme my risk is very high because i am financing msme and msme is supposed to give me back now in case of trade platform what is happening when i am financing msme i am supposed to get the money back from hua so there is a risk shift out so risk is getting shifted from the msme to hua that is also now been completely automated so what will happen suppose me as a hdfc bank decide to purchase a receivable purchase a invoice which has been raised by the msme on a hul so i will actually bid for it now this is where bidding happens on this platform so hdfc bank will quote okay i will charge you 9.5% for the invoice you have raised on hul sbi will come in you are charging 9.5% i will charge 9% yes bank will come in i will charge you only 8.5% then kishore pradhan cooperative bank will come in <laughs> i will charge you 7% it is hul risk and i will bid for 7.5% he has a choice he has a choice then msme supplier will see what are the rates i have got 9% 9.5% 7.5% because he is going to pay the charges he will select 7.5% hmm. he will come to me he will approve my bid once the bid is approved the system will debit bank's account credit msme's account what is the amount if the invoice is 100 minus 7.5% for say 90 days or all those things interest will be deducted automated process so msme will immediately get t plus 1 day will get the payment bank's account will be debited msme's account will be credited simple on due date hul is supposed to pay nobody is going to do the follow up on due date hul hindustan unilever account will be debited and bank's account will be credited completely automated process it is called as nach mandate national automatic clearing house it happens we have to set it up so you can go up to particular amount and how much you can do and if there is no balance in hul's account it will be treated as a default it will be treated as a default by hul and i have as a, as a platform platform will report this as a default to many banking institution to cbl krilsi and all those things so the option of default is not there many times what happens if some corporate has got some genuine issue what they will do they will actually call up everybody and say ki i don't have money can you actually request for five days extension so he will get five days extension bank will charge some additional penal interest and get the money and this is what we started something like 6 years back especially they have taken a push in covid so what was the value there are three trades platform which has been approved by rbi one is receivable exchange mind solution and a trades that is promoted by access bank mind solution is a private company uh, rxl has been promoted by sigb and nsc and icici and yes bank yes bank also what was the value 5 years back 100 crores per annum what does that mean 
invoices of 100 crores were being purchased on the platform and financed to the MSME and on due date of course corporates were giving back to them. It was just absolutely fabulous business for banks also and good for the MSME also win-win situation. Many corporate, big corporates started looking at a supply chain solution. So they wanted all their suppliers to get onboarded on the tiers platform because it is completely automated process. We don't worry. Once they accept the invoice, their account will get debited. System will generate all the advice. Bank's account will get credited. Absolutely no problem. And they started recommending the suppliers to go for this uh, enrollment on the trades platform. Absolutely simple. Because what will happen? They will tell you, okay, you will get right now. What is your borrowing cost? 14%, which is backed by the collateral. You come on the platform. I will request some <laughs> banks, say HDFC, SBI, Yes Bank, to uh, purchase the receivable at 7%, 8%, 9%. 9 so what is the if it has been purchased at 9% against 14%? You are saving 5%. Color of the money is the same, whether you give it through the bank or through the platform. Number uh, another another important point is that there you have to sign a separate agreement with each bank. On the platform, you just sign one agreement with the platform, and all 60, 70 banks will be there, and they will be bidding for you. You will simply get the money immediately at a lowest rate. And now volume is as of last month, in the month of February, each platform cross 5,000 crore per month. So in February month, how much invoices were financed by three placard on an average? Minimum 15,000 crore, 15,000 crore finance was Jain made available March. to MSME. Their account got credited. Can you imagine this kind of annual? We started from 200 crore per annum. So now we are looking at 5,000 crore per month. And this is for one platform. There are three platforms. Everybody is actually in the range of 5,000 to 6,000. So minimum 15,000, 16,000 crore finance was made available. That is the basic benefit of the technology and the infrastructure which is getting created. With this success, now what government has suggested, let's implement a similar kind of a solution for the cross border also. We are talking about big export push. We are talking about the manufacturing in India. If I do manufacturing in India, I need finance. It is all export. If I'm exporting, I need post shipment finance. I need pre-shipment finance, export finance. We need to make it available. We need to create that infrastructure. So that is where now the work is going on. This similar platform based out of the GIP city. That is uh, ITFS platform, International Trade Financial Service. It is regulated separately. It is outside the Indian geographical, though it is in Gandhinagar. It has got some, we call it financial service center. It is in the same line, like Dubai has a financial service center. Singapore has a financial service center. What is the benefit of that? That regulation of India will be lower. And you can actually deal in a better fashion with the global people outside. So now there is an ITFS platform. When you talk about the ITFS platform, it talks about the entire cross-border chain. You export, import, financing is available. Same concept there will be. But here, in case of trades domestic, only MSME seller can get into the platform. Banks in India only can get into the platform. Now this ITFS platform, all exporters can get on this platform. When I say all exporters, not only exporters from India, but Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, USA, Europe, all financial institutions which are allowed to do the trade financing in their geography, from US all, all banks, factoring companies, NBFCs can come on the platform and finance. So look at the finance getting available at a global level. Now there are fintech companies which are actually financing. Why? Because banks cannot reach out to these small, small, small vendors to the each corner of the city, each corner of the metro, second tier metro. So now what is the export? Any idea? What is India's on an average export per month export? It's approximately 60 to 65 billion dollar per month, of which approximately 35 40 billion dollar is oil, gems, and jewelry. Import is 70 75 billion dollar per month, of which again 40 uh, uh, approximately 40 45 is oil. That kind of an infrastructure that is going to get doubled, that is going to get tripled over a period of time. 
so how do we finance it and that is where this itfs platform comes in and it is technologically so great now we have done some transaction where the exporter is in india importer is in greece and financing has been done by a us based us based finance company or fintech company we have done one transaction where importer is in india exporter is in bangladesh and financing has been done by some company based out of germany these are all live transaction now we are working on a transaction where exporter importer or financing entity all are outside india now look at the infrastructure which is getting created so just to answer your question there are efforts being made to implement those kind of an aggressive number so i hope i answer your question aapke liye batao ki aapka jo what is the ideal situation your expert export should be more than your imports correct yes yes otherwise kya hota hai deficit ha so it's simple your pocket money you get it from your parents hmm. should be more than your expenses in the college hmm. so the export uh, more we export that is better how will export when the number of entrepreneurs number of industries uh, will go up with this make in india concept lot of new industries new entrepreneurs new opportunities have come up. that is the main factor and still if you look at the as against a demand of close to 70 trillions indian rupees credit demand for the msme in india still there exists a credit gap of 33 to 35 trillion indian rupees so lot of things need to be done so with the um, uh, present government's initiatives and uh, the directives from uh, the minister of finance to all the financial institutions the credit delivery to the msm sector need to be boosted where there is a bigger role of fintechs in extending credit to the uh, msmes for well, most of the msmes they don't have access to the formal credit arrangement that is why the fintechs play a major role that is exactly what he had pointed out ki unbanked clients who had no history because there was a panipur wala who was actually taking everything in cash so if i am a banker how do i lend him i don't have any papers i don't know how much he is earning he says he is earning 10000 rupees per month or 20000 rupees per month actually it is 10000 rupees almost a day panipur <laughs> wala so question is how because of this upi transfer there is some track record we call it electronic footprint or digital footprint we can actually assure you ki yes this money has come through or has been routed through whether he may be spending it he may be spending on multiple things buying the raw material you know uh, paying the money to the police wala as a hafta as and all those things but there is a track record how much money he has received how much money he has been paying out so i can actually assess his financial situation and can i take the correct decision yes, yes. so uh, beside this there is another thing which uh, we have started in yes bank was the uh, film and media funding if you see the film and media funding were largely uh, uh, more of a cash transactions and unorganized way but we have started that and of course we were not going to all the uh, players but we picked up the major ones uh, and we have only funded them and that has actually organized that entire sector so you are challenging see. the havana racket <laughs> hey havala system man come on we we did that actually <laughs> and we are proud of it so uh, uh, so this is this is another thing most important thing which is happening before i hand over to kevin is that the china plus 1 uh, uh, thing which has happened in india where the globally people were depending largely china is a major outsourcing partner now glo- uh, after pandemic everybody is realize india is can also become a one of the major key uh, partner and that also giving a lot of boost to us uh, as far as uh, as far as the uh, manufacturing side is concerned atmanirbhar bharat sir is there only one uh, thing which need to be uh, taken care is atmanirbhar bharat when you become a manufacturer initially uh, mr dwar said that initial time we were not able to export 
because of whatever government policies. Government is pushing more of exports now, but Atma Nirbhar is about producing and selling here in India. If you get a good margin and you start selling abroad, uh, you might be uh, end up getting more money, but then locally we are not able to give that quality products. So uh, a lot can be done in that area also that uh, ensure that uh, made in India, uh, make in India and consume also in India if, if something can be looked at that, that was my point. I will answer to your question on China, but let it complete. So, so with regards to uh, the manufacturing part, so you have covered the how MSMEs are being financed to the uh, uh, financing of the supply chain thing. Now my question was that how uh, and how will they get being financed to uh, to set up the project or a plant? Now I think the banking sector involvement is there as of now. But going forward, that will be reduced. And why? Because if you see, there is a lot of digital assets that has been created. And there has been a lot of investments. See, earlier, uh, we were investing. If I have savings, how will I invest? I will go and keep FD. Right? As uh, Sachin also said. Now, we are doing SIP. Right? So, my... Uh, Retail investors are now financing the equity market and there are many IPOs coming. They are investing in mutual funds. They are investing in equity direct. Now this is getting, this money is going to the promoters, to the entrepreneurs who are then investing in creating the manufacturing plants. So what I'm saying is that with, uh, with lot of digitization happening, there are many digital assets get, that are getting created. Uh, not only so crypto sir, will uh, take it forward, but uh, there is, I am I am investing in gold. I am not having gold in my uh, locker. I am having an ETF there. I am, I am investing in gold bonds. Now I am investing, people are investing in mutual funds. People are directly investing in equity. So these are the digital assets that has been created. And the savings which were going in only in FD, now the savings are directly financing the uh, entrepreneurs, right? So this is one of the, uh, maybe uh, fueling the uh, economy directly by giving equity to the entrepreneurs. And I think that is going to have much more uh, uh, multiplier effect to the economy. So that is one thing I think uh, I would... I would, uh, highlight, I would like to highlight. That's, that's really a valid point. I'm coming back to his question. But before that, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you know about Red Sea crisis? Can somebody tell me what is Red Sea crisis which is happening now? Anybody? No, no, no. Anybody? You are a management student. You have to keep ready. Yes, tell me. There are Houthi rebels in uh, Gulf region and uh, they are uh, resisting to uh, global trades via sea routes in uh, Red Sea and they try to, uh, they try in previous time, they try to cut the internet line also. So uh, there is a huge disaster for global financial markets and transaction if they cut and they succeed uh, in cutting these lines. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. You should be aware of latest development. You should keep thinking about it. Do you think it will actually impact the global business? Correct. In what sense? Okay. So what's happening? Uh, when we talk about a rare sea crisis, uh, there is an issue at Yemen. See so what happens if you look at the sea route, there is a shortcut, I will say, shortcut going through Yemen to the Suez Canal and then the materials or goods can be dispatched, delivered to the European countries. If you don't take that route, which is the shortest route through Yemen, through Suez Canal, you have to take a route of Cape of Good Hope. So you have to actually take a complete round to reach to the European country. So if you are sailing, if you are shipping the goods through the sea travel, you have increased almost 10 to 15 days. 
officially it is 10 to 15 days but it takes more than three weeks to reach because there is a lot of congestion in the uh, ports so it is more than three weeks then time schedule has got impacted cost of freight has got impacted carbon emission is high insurance cost is high so who is getting impacted almost everybody almost everybody how do we how do we do away with that crisis there is no sign of solution just for your exam, you know information just two days back one of the vessel i think abdul miyar abdullah got hijacked it is a bangladesh vessel got hijacked by somali pirates again moving into thing it is not impacting the red sea crisis is not impacting the middle east countries but especially the european countries earlier they were targeting only the vessels which are actually extending the support to israel what these terrorists are trying to say because israel should stop attacking hamas and they should you know get into some kind of an agreement peaceful agreement israel is not listening to anybody even uae or europe nobody they are managing their show on their own now because to support hamas these terrorists are actually atta attacking all the vessels of Israeli flag. That means the vessel owned by the Israeli guys. So they started with that. Now that has not created any impact. So they have started attacking all the vessels available. So what will happen? It will have another impact on the global economy. And India has started actually feeling the heat of this. What is our export to the European? Almost 19 to 25 percent of our export is to the Europe. Almost 22 to 30 percent is uh, of the total import is imports from the Europe. So it is going to impact. For us, when we say impact, it is a financial impact. Delay in the arrival of the shipment or you know export of the shipment, which will actually uh, you know uh, make the assembly line going for a toss high cost of freight high cost of insurance insurance has increased to the extent of something like uh, 200 to 300 percent but i'm talking about the money insurance i'm still not talking about the credit insurance at all the credit insurance is not available nowadays for this kind of in travels so how do we get out of that we need to be very sure when we talk about the global trade when we are talking about the largest economy which is coming from the exports and reducing the import there will be such kind of an issues and how it can be managed finding out other alternative routes why don't you think about some kind of an routes because Merx had tried that they say that they will be able to deliver the goods to some extent up to a particular sea level and from there it can be air picked and it can be travel but then again this is a short term what are the different ways there was some issue at a Suez canal last time which halted the entire traffic for almost two to three weeks. We need to broaden that particular uh, Suez Canal uh, depth and broadness. We need to look at that. So when you are talking about all those things, you need to also understand the repercussions of such issues. This will continue to happen. Somali pirates were there for ages. They are getting more technical now. They are getting good boats now, good vessels now. How do we control it? That need to be understood. Government is working on that. I'll give you the simple example. Have you heard that in past there was some issue in the global trade because the containers pricing was increased. Containers were not available. You know that? Almost a year back. It, it impacted the shipping industry. And you know, according to latest news, news report surveys, these are all informal surveys, who holds the maximum share of container manufacturing at in a global world who any idea which country holds maximum share in the container industry globally is china china it's something like 70 to 85 percent of the market is controlled <coughs> container market is controlled by china there are two three companies icmc mm. and all those things there is one more development why i'm trying to tell you you should be aware of this so when you are talking about the global financing all these factors are impacting us so having a normal container is the thing of the past now there is something called smart containers smart containers mean containers with the chip so there will be chip which will be tracked by the satellite 
and it is chip is so advanced that it will tell you all the information to, to the consigner to the shipping company or to the manufacturer of that particular chip what they will say they will say where the vessel is going so you can track the container when the doors of the container were open what is the current temperature of the container if that container uh, temperature drops beyond a particular level it will send the sms and emails and alerts to the required parties that kind of a smart container is there if the container is uh, standing still without moving it will immediately create an alert send emails and smss depending on the requirement to the all related parties so you can actually track it again there is a news in the market rumor in the market that of the smart containers market 60 to 70% market is owned by china we started you know building the containers in india now there is a lot of focus being you know being given but for that container manufacturing the basic steel is also being imported from china so there are the challenges we need to understand those challenges so when we get into those kind of challenges always whenever you are doing any study whenever you are thinking about any issue look at from the global and then national try to understand at the basics and then go ahead so i think i have answered his questions uh, do we have a time limit <coughs> sorry sir i mean i have no problem i i will give it to him now So again, uh, taking from there only the innovation and uh, riding on the technology for the opportunities. So we have seen that uh, advent of uh, UPI, how it has helped uh, everybody uh, from very gross root level until uh, going into the beyond the frontiers in other countries also. Uh, the services and uh, the products. now there is thing that what you need that is going to be delivered to you what was earlier that uh, what products uh, banks or finance institutions are having they were offering the what kind of services they were having they were offering so now the customers have been so demanding uh, nowadays that they are of they are asking that we need this type of product so that this kind of services can which the financial uh, institutions or uh, the banks are delivering according to your need there there are so many examples uh, like which which we we can quote right starting from uh, if you if you want to buy uh, any any goods from the market uh, from the market amazon or anywhere there are finances available there you can just convert it to very easily you can convert it into into the emi there, there are if you have credit if you are holding the credit card uh, that you can convert the interest free emis so who who is bearing the charges of those finances suppose we have bought one television of 30000 rupees and uh, there is interest free charges interest free emi of uh, 12 nine month up to until nine month six month or nine month so they give you free of uh, free of interest cost who is going to bear that cost of interest somebody must be bearing and uh, if somebody is bearing the cost it will be a loss nobody will like uh, like to do a business of loss so you need to think that the fintech company which prompts you to go and buy a television so if you swap a card card credit card or debit card there is a, there is a charges 2% which goes to the bank fintech company have arrangement with the bank bank shares almost in 80% of that to the fintech company who are providing this kind of services and they take care of the finances so the landscape is such that uh, the bargaining power of the customer uh, nowadays has increased so much that uh, you are getting products and the services at very very cheap level and available to your doorstep that is one second thing tha- thing is that they are knowing not going to finance everybody so as i said that they are reading your smss they are reading your uh, emails they are getting to know that uh, where you live 
there are ai available uh, with the fintech company which can chart out your profile and can tell you where you are living what should be your living standard how much you would be earning without knowing that you, whether you are working or not if you are suppose if you are residing in bandra in some particular society they will they will tell you that okay this person will having a net worth of at least 10 crore and these predictions are based on the ai based on the facts based on the information they gather from the market and uh, in the in a technological world and innovations use of uh, blockchain ai no, no, and this uh, using that the machine learning e anything everything can be predicted very well use of ai nowadays in a fashion and it is going to lead lead the financial industry as well as a knowledge industry particularly use of the uh, you must be using the chat gpt and like ai is to create your projects and all so that is helping not only in your educational world there is also helping all the participants right starting from uh, consumers to provide the services the seller of the products to bring you everybody on a table and do a negotiation which is beneficial to both so the role of intermediary is like getting reduced the interface with the consumer and the service provider or product seller is becoming more and more and that that's getting uh, both both of them are getting benefited so landscape is changing riding on a technology bringing the risk so we should be aware of the risk as well when when you are like downloading anything on your mobile be it facebook be it your whatsapp now if, if even people are using the whatsapp are making the payments yes. right so you need to be very like curious that what permission you are going who are going to give you your tools you need to go to the your settings and see that what are the websites which are like tracking your information there is no website which you open in even your computer is not tracking right so there are tools we use exactly you can see that if you open only one website even website of this uh, college if you open see how many uh, other pa other uh, participants are tracking tracking your information which you are accessing through the website simply you visit some hospital just visit the hospital come back to home next day you will get a call for medical insurance mm. the location so that's how the innovation is working location track. now i think we'll open the floor well, uh, for uh, question uh, now the forum is open for uh, question answers uh, feel free to ask yeah. dear all if you have any questions please ask uh, we are also the distributing uh, the sheets if you want <coughs> you can answer How many of you? How many of you actually look at the terms and condition when you download any app? Agree, agree, agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> no, unfortunately, you know, uh, I always go through all those permissions I am giving to the app, and ultimately, then I end up in not downloading the app. When, when I actually, you know. I like to in read the term and condition you will not download any app and then the way you know the no i know where my daughter looks at me as if i am from some stone age creature if you have to ask you yeah i can call me stone age again because i don't have facebook i think of so we have we have no option but to download some apps but to the extent possible i am not on social media so ha uh -huh, so i use only linkedin just to ha uh ha -huh, uh, that's basically a uh, selfish motto being on linkedin is basically to promote our business so there is a good part to that that is when the government has come up with this data policy so what nobody follows it I know. I mean, we have been actually going through, you know, for some international project. We were talking about some GDPR. 
So when we actually, you know, approach one legal, uh, you know, to draft a particular policy and uh, agreement, its cost only, I mean, the cost of that advocate itself was so high, but then we had no choice. We have to have because we are dealing with a lot of global parties. I think you guys should ask questions, otherwise we keep talking to ourselves. Yeah, we are all old bankers. Yes, sir. Yes. We are here for you. Difficult question to all gentlemen, sir. <laughs> so, so I have multiple questions, starting like two or three questions if I'm allowed to ask. So the first question was, <laughs> so my first question is to Mr. Sachindar Rai. Um, so earlier you talked about AI can be used to detect frauds. So how can that be done? How is AI doing that? And secondly, um, you told about that AI use market information to detect any person's network. So how is that done and what market information we are talking about? Is it uh, limited to, uh, you know, big... Uh, big HNIs or big businessmen or big uh, people with you know high net worths or it, it can be done for a you know a retailer to work or someone like us yeah so the first question what AI role in is fraud detection so AI is uh, uh, always followed by the ML machine learning if there is no machine learning there is no use of AI I will not do anything so machine learning is a fuel for AI for machine learning, we need data, right? So the pattern of the frauds learned by the computer, basis on that, they generate their patterns. If any transaction you do, for example, if you, you have, if you have an account in any, any, any bank, uh, suppose for example, ICICI bank or ES bank or SDFC bank, just go and do a transaction of one lakh rupees. If you never done any transaction beyond 50,000, the moment you don't do the transaction of 1 lakh rupees, you will get a call. The early warning signal. <laughs> <laughs> so you will get a call because that is suspected fraud. So that's the role of the AI to detect that where could be the possibility of for any fraud. It prompts the bank that this particular transactions may be a probable fraud and then in turn the bank will alert you that whether you have done this transaction then press 1 if you are not done this transaction then press 2 like that so this is how uh, the AI is helping in the fraud detection even in prevention Earlier, so these are prevention to, to come to know after that fellow has taken away money <laughs> now you are able to understand before something happens and your early warning signal there is one more thing actually if you really look at banking system way banking system has been, uh, you know, software has been developed that a particular exporter or particular client is raising the invoice to the extent of from USD $100,000 to USD $500,000. If there is any invoice more than that amount, say $700,000 or $1.5 million, system will create an auto email alert. It will go to the operation head, it will go to the compliance and it will install the transaction. And then somebody needs to actually get into the system, look at it and actually see. Because the train of that invoicing pattern for that particular customer is anything between $300,000 to $700,000 or $1 million. Anything beyond that, system will identify. I'll tell you another example. The way we actually look at it when we do the cross-order thing. We actually do a lot of KYCs and AML. So we track vessels. And we track vessels through satellites and we know the exact location of that vessel. Exact location <coughs> and in live location. What, what is his speed? What was the last port? What is the next port? We track everything. Then for example, if any invoice, what is the way of doing the fraud in trade transaction cross border? Copy last bill of lading. You know, just take a color printout, bill of lading and just print it and give it in. So the vessel name will be the same. So, so what's bill of, uh, what the term that it used, if you could explain that. Bill of lading is basically uh, the document of the title which is given to the shipper. This is basically proof that you have exported the goods through a particular vessel. So it will have the vessel details, vessel IMO number, like your car's registration number. And if that registration number, I mean the IMO number gets repeated in the system within X period of time, say two months, then it will, system will create a red alert. It will not go beyond a particular level unless and it is manually, manually approved. The logic is, see for example, any vessel, like for example, any vessel traveling from India to USA, it takes 45 days. Okay. Now, if he has used that vessel and it is going to the USA or Europe, if I get the same IMO number, so it is highly unlikely that same vessel is actually coming back. 
and actually picking up the material within 15 days and again going the same. So I cannot have one vessel name or vessel number coming out repeatedly within 15 days, 20 days, one month. So I will build up, the system will build up that artificial intelligence through machine learning as you rightly said. The logics are fake. That in that case, because this is a physical, now once you go to USA, it will take 45 to 45, 90 days. Because the vessel need to come back and the vessel won't run around empty. It's a no. big vessel and there's a cost. So this is how you actually can detect. And there are multiple things, but this is how, just to give the two, three examples. So can I say that the parameters for fraud detection are just the transaction values and the defaults and all, like number of defaults? Not Transaction yeah, value is a one one of the, one of the ingredients. Yeah. So all the frauds are getting reported to Reserve Bank of India. There there are repositories. So there are enough machine learning for the fraud. Basis on the that when you implement a fraud detection system, so we uh, define scenarios, right? And basis on that scenario, only the system tr trigger the alerts. So it could be like preventive uh, kind of scenario and detective kind of scenario. In preventive kind of scenario, you will get a call. In detective kind of scenario, after doing the transaction, next day or uh, two after two days, it will detect, okay, this is a fraud. So if you go to RBI website, uh, you can claim an amount if uh, from the date of transaction until 15th day. If you uh, confirm that there is a fraud, you can lodge a complaint with the bank, you can get your amount back if you are not at default. I think this is also very uh, good information for everybody that from the date of transaction until 15 days you can claim your fraudulent amount with the, the bank. Okay, then your ne next question on profiling. And the logics gets updated from time to time. Yes. Yeah. Next. He has one, one more one question one more. on uh, <laughs> market share of, uh, yeah. Profiling, yes. Uh, so how, um, you know, what market data is considered while considering the profile of a particular individual, like how much net worth he might be having, you know, what market data is considered there and it was an addition to that was, is it just done for the high net worth individuals or it can be done for a someone like us? So uh, for profiling, artificial intelligence, right, when artificial intelligence ride on the cyber space, then anything and everything thing he can read and he can give fetch you report for example when we are doing the kyc i i, I have seen that in one of the fintechs is generated a profile of a person that this person is having uh, onboarded into what all the platform for example uh, azure platform or tata click uh, luxury or all the dating dating website platform if, we, if the person is onboarded they give the list of the, these are the dating website the, you have logged in and these are the other uh, everything so in cyberspace it's like a decoded uh, things are available if you are able to read that everything is available so it is not that uh, for example for for uh, Writing your project, you seek for the data. Which website you want to go, data you want to go, that is gone. That is gone. Just go to G chat GPT. Simple, I am telling you. What data you want, you will get that data. AI riding, uh, riding on a cyber space can give you anything. Let me tell one, one very surprising thing. Even somebody, I know, he got the window key. No. Huh? On chat GPT, he asked that right in the chat GPT, ki, okay, tell me the window key, I want to install the window in my system. So he said, so no, no, that is a unauthorized information, so I cannot provide you. Ah, then good. then he returned that, okay, let me know the unauthorized, uh, let me know the window key, which is uh, unauthorized and I, I cannot put, put into uh, use that. So he got it. So the... Cyber space means if anything which has gone into your mobile, which has gone into your computer, that is available in the market. It is just that a capability of the person knows or not. Let me tell you a dangerous thing. There are tools available for free, open source tool. Using that, you can do anything. Give some examples of no, those tools. Very dangerous. <laughs> not talking about even. I am not talking even about dark web. This is white web. Things are available in open source. Mein available hai. Tools. 
which he can use. And profiling, you were talking, no? profiling depends from person to person. And the targeted uh, client of the company which is looking for the profiling of the people, it depends. For example, they may be uh, looking at the persons who have just been, uh, they have completed NB as some particular uh, graduation in India, wants to pursue their study abroad. So the, so that is how it happens. Okay, got it. So I can say that it can be done for someone like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can actually download one civil report or expedient report, credit report. Huh. You download one, one is free. Yeah. You don't have to pay. So you just log into some site mm. and there are three companies providing that. One report is free. <laughs> then check, you can see what are the credit card report, you know, information, yeah. debit card information, everything will be there. If there is a delay of rupees 50, that will also highlight and that will reduce your score from 700 to 400. Mm. Okay. So you can actually check that out. Then you go for the next answer. So, hello all. Uh, so, my question is very simple actually. Uh, now, because I am from uh, the field of marketing and mostly I am doing uh, digital marketing stuff. So, first of all, you said that now there is no safe raha nahi hai. Hum logo ko to daily basis pe aisa hai ki bahut sare softwares, application unke saath kaam karna padta hai. To aap hi abhi ek koi solution hume bata sakte hai ki jisse hum log safe kar sakte hai. There is something called vulnerability. Yes. Okay. So, you guys are not vulnerable now. A person like us, if we start downloading, our data and everything will be gone. So you have nothing to lose now. So it's till the yeah, till the no no no, till the time you have nothing to lose. Go ahead. But who gives this information about you? Uh, we can Only you. Yeah, but Only you. then we have to work with it, right? That's why I wanted to ask that. See, what happens, no? If you download the software, it doesn't allow you unless you give you the rights. So, give you the rights, so you download the software, and again, you you know, especially for the app, okay. you can actually disable them. Disable the access. So, no, so, so but having said that, ahead having said that, for downloading. listen, having said that, yeah. you must be aware of the harmful software. Yeah. No, even sir, not forget about harmful software. Everybody have Facebook. Yeah. You are on the market. <laughs> you are on sale. Let me tell you. Yeah, that's what I said. So there is saying that uh, if you are getting anything for free, you are the product. Yeah. You are being sold. So there is no escape till the time you are in cyberspace. The only thing is that you should not upload anywhere personal information, mm -hmm. personal photographs. Mm -hmm. Don't have it on mobile. If you have it on computer, don't connect that to privacy setup. Thicker. Privacy setup. Thicker. Keep it. Otherwise, there is no escape. Jo marji karlo, mere wo abhi chahiye. Ab puri janam kundli do minute mein nikal gaya. For example, it is happening like that. Even I, maybe I am not sure. Some people say mobile also listens. Yeah. So even if you switched off, is listening. Let me tell you. Yeah. Even your switched off mobile is listening. Some with that, I will buy a Mercedes. <laughs> Next, somebody calls me. And you get that personalized advertising. So, you are talking about Facebook and all those things. Everybody will be having Facebook and Instagram. So, you see, I have been from the forensic background. So, I know how things work. So, let me tell you one more thing, very dangerous thing. According to the IT Act, right? If strictly, if you give the power, if the that police wala get to know what power he has after the IT Act, everybody will be behind the bar. The law is in such a way. So it's always good to preserve your personal information. Do not put on a Facebook, Instagram, any social website because they have your permission to publish those information. You, by knowing or not knowing, you have already permitted them. Whatever you are pasting on the Facebook, they can do whatever they want to do. I will invite you at my home. You can say the same thing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, and nobody is going to listen to that. I guess it's a simple yeah, question. Uh, okay, next question. Next, next question. question. Good afternoon, sir. My question is, what are the future challenges facing the development of Indian financial system? Let me, let me ask. Mm, that's a good question. We are discussing yeah. See, creating an infrastructure and making sure that we are up to the mark for the global business. You know, the thought process is Vasudev Kutumbakam. 
so when we are looking at any kind of an trade so we are talking about a global trade so now the focus is not only on india trade it is global trade there are multiple challenges there are challenges which are something beyond our control like for example red sea crisis beyond our control we cannot do ukraine we cannot do anything if you really look at geopolitical situation china china is very aggressive china is actually trying to control sri lanka bangladesh nepal you have seen what's happened everybody is getting into trade trap that is something which is beyond our control we are trying to control to some extent by some you know by the uh, way we can actually push our external affairs policies there are another important thing is that how do we actually create a infrastructure within india to support the trade so at least when you are fighting the battle on the two side one is the external factors and internal factors so we are actually trying to see how the internally at least we are we are absolutely up to the mark there is a some project called ulip that is unified logistic project uh, uh, interface project so what is happening is that uh, that under that particular project you know there are seven departments ministry of finance ministry of commerce ministry of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, civil aviation and all those things they are getting connected to some one app when we talk about the blockchain so there are 24 different sites dif- different source of informations are getting integrated with this ulip project so you will be able to track the entire journey of the cargo or the truck or the any kind of an movement on this so once you get you know once you uh, upload or you know uh, offload the uh, say container how the container will go to it has been integrated with the gst system it has been integrated integrated with the toll system do you know that toll system every toll system it is compulsory to have a camera it will actually identify your rfid code mm. by that way it will be taken care of or your uh, vehicle number so till last page till last stage of the travel entire goods are being tracked so there are basically 24 different uh, you know systems like gst toll and everything civilization is get adpms idpms all these systems are getting integrated uh, with the ulip project this is just a starting now we are talking about the logistic in india when we actually get one step ahead when we talk about the entire cross border through the smart containers or through satellites you know this will be completely different world what india is fighting for india is actually looking at a different uh, perspective one it is creating a infrastructure number two it is cre- creating a policy of made in india manufacture in india number 3 it is trying to establish itself in the space next world war will be fought through space and not many countries are there if you see in last one or two years all countries are actually going for the space research and space india is well ahead along with russia china and uh, usa and of course to the extent some extent japan also so india is actually trying to establish if you remember in the uri uh, attack USA refused to give us the locations of the terrorist that was a turning point and that point at that point of time indian government decided we need to have our space nowadays we can actually track anything in india and outside there are two types of you know satellites one actually keeps moving around uh, the entire earth and another type of layer i don't know the technical words but then it is fixed so it will actually only only capture a particular geographical area like area of asia so they will only capture so when the satellite is moving it is actually having the speed of the earth so it will actually be capturing only that there are another level of satellites which will actually move around so at any point of india is actually working on those kind of thing so when you control that when you know the satellite systems and managing it is not only the safety and security it is basically for the trade and that is what we are trying to do long way to go but yes we are going in the right direction i hope i answer that question next <laughs> lot of questions okay, i keep talking much so okay uh, sir uh, we have first question from kushbu rajput uh, she is asking uh, nbfc is capturing a huge amount of customers of and bank what are your views about it NBFC is capturing a huge amount of customers of banks. What are your views about? Okay, NBFCs are there to capture the need of the uh, particular segment 
या पर्सन और इंडिविजुअल हु आर नॉट है फॉर्मल चैनल ऑफ क्रेडिट और फैसिलिट सर्विसेस फ्रॉम द अदर ये आर इज दैट इज बैंक एंड अदर फिनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो दैट इज वाई द एन बी एफ सीज है इट इज ट्रू बिकॉज दे आर सर्टन कैटेगरी ऑफ पीपल हु आर हैविंग बिजनेस या दे आर पर्सनल नीड्स हु आर नॉट फुलफिलिंग द क्राइटेरिया सेट बाय द फॉर्मल चैनल दैट इज वेयर द इट इज ट्रू दैट एन बी एफ सीज आर कैप्चरिंग लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स फॉर फ्रॉम दिस सेगमेंट See, NBFC has its own limitation. They cannot capture the banking business. So uh, there are two kind of NBFC: deposit taking and non-deposit taking. Those who are deposit taking are very few, I think five or six. And uh, majority of the NBFCs do are lending institution. Lending to whom? They come up with a small capital. But their target is the personal loan. housing finance or maybe uh, vehicle loans majorly most of the nvfcs is on uh, uh, like personal personal loan majority then comes to uh, housing finance then very few are who are actually financing the trades and all right so there is only lending side they can go go ahead with that second thing the cost of fund for the nvfc is higher than the banks so the rate of interest which they are going to charge on the loan will be always be the higher than the bank so that uh, is something that bank will be attracting more clients than the nbfc even on the lending escape uh, the second thing on deposit front also uh, since we have very limited number of nbfcs and uh, we have a banking service or all all across the country very diverse the reliability factor of the customer is more on the bank than nbfc so we still on the deposit front also though nbfc offer higher rate of deposits that is sometime it's get looks lucrative but the people who are like uh, coming from the traditional thought process thinking they will not prefer to go to the uh, nbfc rather than going to the pnb and uh, putting a deposit there 6% of of the rate thank you so the segment of customers Which are catered by NBFCs are entirely different. Okay, next. I think the next question is about the cryptocurrency. I think mean, a lot of people want to know about crypto cryptocurrency and whether the artificial intelligence will eat away their jobs. Uh, that's the concern uh, there. You want me to answer? Yeah, yeah. Not cryptocurrency, but in short. So I think everybody is happy. I don't miss my wife. <laughs> I also keep saying the same thing. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> okay, uh, cryptocurrency. If you take out the note from your pocket, that will be one line statement. That is the government of India promises to pay you. In cryptocurrency, who tells you? Can you show me what is cryptocurrency? Whether this is it? It is digital asset. You take UPI. You can show that this is the balance. Take a ATM, GPay. You show this is the balance. Payment wallet, you can show balance. Cryptocurrency, how do you see? I don't understand. I don't understand. I stay away from cryptocurrency. Stoneish person, but this is I would suggest you from RBI perspective, it is not allowed to deal in the cryptocurrency. We cannot do any kind of a trade transaction in the cryptocurrency. Earlier, few years back, RBI had made it very clear that if you have cryptocurrency, please encash it and give it. Who controls it? Cryptocurrency will have a multiple facets of the industry. Who has launched it? There is a Bitcoin, which is a one cryptocurrency. Do you know that Ripple, which is the foreign exchange transfer platform, also works on a you know kind of a coins uh, 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 coin process. So that is called as a Ripple coin. Technically, that is also a cryptocurrency. It works in the ecosystem. Like you take the IANA, you take UPI, you go to everybody. You can go to the bank. You can get the money from the bank. You can transfer the money back to the bank. Cryptocurrency yes. is a big question mark. Don't basically get into that kind of thing. Sorry, the second question. Yeah, yeah. The picture of a crypto cryptocurrency sir, is pretty different. Uh, I have uh, my wallet of uh, cryptocurrency. 
So in India, when initially the cryptocurrency came, the first cryptocurrency is a Bitcoin. It everybody knows. It started with the some uh, point cents, and now it sits in a million. So cryptocurrency is just like any other currency which you are having. It is just that, uh, like sir said, that uh, for your uh, INR, Reserve Bank of India gives you a guarantee. And who gives you guarantee for one rupees? Note. Finance Minister. So uh, all the notes, two rupees and above, is guaranteed by Reserve Bank of India. That is not the case in case of uh, uh, <coughs> cryptocurrency. Though we call it that uh, smart contracts. There are contracts within the blockchain which the promise that whatever the value of the currency is, they will be going to pay you. It's a like a kind of investment. For example, if you have, you have bought a share, share of any company, its rates are fluctuating. This cryptocurrency is just like that. Difference is that if you bought an equity share, there is assets underlying. For cryptocurrency, there is no underlying assets. It's it's entirely on the technology and uh, uh, demand and supply. In India, formally it is not banned. But informally, RBI discourages it. Once RBI has banned it, but people move to Supreme Court and uh, Supreme Court order Reserve Bank of India to withdraw the circular. So, is we, uh, agree. we actually made a specific request to RBI to talk about it, and RBI clearly said cryptocurrency, we are not allowing it. Yeah, but nowadays, market is again it's rebounding and booming. So the price of a Bitcoin has gone to the 18, 18 lakhs level. Nowadays, I think it's more than the 40, 45 lakhs. The banks were maintaining the accounts of cryptocurrency traders. Yes. And they have also been frozen. So they are maintaining because there are exchanges in India. Uh, just to give you, just I'll give you one example. Uh, coin. The, the, there are many exchanges in India who like do the trading. And the capturing of the KYC information and anything else, it is the same. Okay. Uh, and the AI is eating away the jobs. AI cannot eat your job, let me tell you. Uh, AI is going to facilitate, facilitate you to give you access to so many things which you cannot have without the AI. For example, suppose if today you, are, you need to work on certain project, you need to write your project as a part of your curriculum. If AI would not have been in place, it is just that you will be writing your poor English, if your English is not good, and collecting data from uh, this website or that website. The use of AI will help you to get the information on the table. How to use that, it's always human intervention is required. So it's going to help you, it's never ever going to eat your jobs. There are a lot of creative jobs in Bin. Uh, yeah, it is creating jobs. No, no, no creative jobs, creative. <laughs> Poet, <laughs> Ipna, so I think that is where. So, but the human behind the uh, artificial intelligence is going to remain. This is what Sir is trying to say. Yeah. So don't worry about it, anybody taking a job. So when computer came, a lot of people said computer came, jobs will be eaten away, but computer stayed. Color TV came, they said people are not only going to watch color TV, nobody going to work, never happened. So people evolve, you know, human beings are there to evolve. So people will evolve, don't worry, just keep your eyes and ears open and look for opportunity. Keep uh, learning, keep, keep learning, uh, keep learning. Yes, and uh, how is the entrepreneur business playing role in geopolitical? I think some concerns, it's, it's, it's concerns about that maybe geopolitically some business houses have been favored and not favored. It's more of a political uh, debate, so let's not get into that. But let me give an example. In China, this is a communist country. They're completely, they were not in favor of uh, business. One person becoming very strong in businesses. But they had to give up that part. And they have identified few people and they said, you do the business. So a little bit of, uh, you know, business house has been told that you please grow your business and take risk and government is there to support. Actually, will elevate the business. But of course, it will remain arguable. That kind of balance has to be there that certain business houses to be favored and certain uh, things, those balance, checks and balances to be kept. 
Hence, we are a democratic country, and uh, this argument will keep happening. And the, uh, there are bureaucrats and and pundits who are keeping a check on that that it should not overblown uh, to to that extent. But but it's more of an arguable. Uh, this this question, I think most of the questions we have answered. Uh, are we going towards digital e rupee? What are your thoughts on e rupee microfinance in India, like credit line in the aspects? I think digital rupee is already already in place. Uh, CBDC we call it. It's, it is nothing different from uh, the rupees you have in your wallet. It is just a digital form of that. Anything specific? You? Huh? And you guys have a bright career. Though, though, though you have not asked, we are telling you. <laughs> We will be there, so if anybody wants to walk in personally and ask questions, you think that and ask a question. So, for example, I was expecting some question within banking, what kind of job opportunities are there, like in marketing, sales, compliance, sir, is here from, is it compliance here in the banking? And uh, what are the other avenues? Because typically, you know, <coughs> bank is a branch, but no, there are other uh, avenues uh, and how we can reach. If you want to become a in compliance, what do you do? So, if you do company secretary and those kind of things, and how you can uh, MBA plus what you can add to reach to in a banking or within the finance sector what you can do and a lot of things you guys have to think like what AI can do, how AI can, this is what exactly the entire world of fertility is looking forward to you. You guys are young, you guys are creative, there are many questions we won't be able to answer. So we are actually looking for you to answer, be more creative. Be absorbed. You advantage. You know, you guys have you have access to information. We never had that access to information. You just need something. Cut up. At a click, you have information. You have to be creative. You have to be more analytical using that information. How to information Okay. So 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 uh, with that advantage, you move forward. Take a leap forward, right? And there are a lot of people uh, there to inspire you and you can pick somebody as a role model and all that. There is one quick thing. Uh, every institute maybe talk about various things, but nobody teaches about how to handle your mind and emotion, which is very, become very, very important nowadays. So I would urge, uh, we were talking about it, that we should have such programs. We, the suggestion is that, that how to manage your mind, and so, because many decisions that you take, these are your emotions. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, how to do that? There is a ways and techniques available. So, we have a program about this. So, I think we look forward to uh, meet you there also. Uh, sir, over to you. Thank you. A lot of uh, very, very uh, you know, fruitful interactions. And uh, uh, we are sure uh, all of you will take uh, advantage of this program. And all of us are there to guide you in case when you have our details. And again, I am repeating, anybody, any one of you uh, uh, intending to join any financial sector, a lot of uh, opportunities are there, they are awaiting you. You have to catch uh, the right kind of opportunity in the right time. So you have to fine-tune your approach, uh, fine-tune your uh, um, uh, working so that uh, you will be able to grab that opportunity. And again, uh, we had a very a nice uh, um, time here. Uh, thanks to Dr. Luhar. And all the learned members of the panel have been very excellent. They, they have uh, uh, expressed their uh, a thought on the topic uh, very well. So again, I thank my um, co-panel members to have come out with a very excellent uh, presentation of the topic. So again, I, on the behalf of the uh, panel, uh, I wish you all the best. And again, big thank to Dr. Uh, Luhar and uh, his uh, uh, team, his colleagues, for having facilitated such a nice program. Thank you. Sir, uh, may I request you please? Sir, uh, on, the, on the behalf of Viva Institute of Management and Research, I 
थैंक ऑल द पैनलिस्ट आज जब मैं सुबह सभी पैनलिस्ट से मिला था तो उन्होंने मुझे बोला था कि वी आर द ओल्ड बैंकर्स बट आपको कभी भी बात करते वक्त ये लगा हो कि वे ओल्ड बैंकर्स हैं बिकॉज इतना सब हमें नई चीजें सीखने को मिली हैं अभी पूरा फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर से सो आई थैंक यू ऑल फॉर दिस एंड आई थैंक द मैनेजमेंट डॉक्टर लुहार फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस इवेंट एंड आई थैंक यू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स ऑडियंस हेयर प्रेजेंट सो आपकी वजह से ही ये प्रोग्राम हो पाया सो थैंक यू ऑल एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट डायरेक्टर सर टू प्लीज फैसिलिटेट द पैनलिस्ट आगे दो ओके सो आई वॉन्ट अ बिग राउंड ऑफ अज ओके वेन आई एम अनाउंसिंग द नेम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मॉडरेटर ऑफ द of this event mr pk das mr sanjeev varia sir mr taaliyan rukni nahi chahiye Kevin Kunwaria Mr Kishore Pradhan sir Very on, Mr. Satin Nagar sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, now I would request you to please stand up for the national anthem.